Your mental health hour. Mind matters on the light breakfast. Always a pleasure having international psychologist Dr. Angela Bass with us. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, both. Okay. You know, the Duchess of Cambridge um, has just had her third child. I think the whole world is rejoicing in this new addition to their family. Of course, there are people who are like looking at any baby and thinking, oh, I want one. <laughs> I'm exactly like that. <laughs> Steve <laughs> is feeling quite broody. <sighs> Not blessed yet with you another child. You want a baby or are you feeling like you are a baby? <laughs> I know there's a fine line between the two and Shaz is losing it right now but no I actually do want a child and I think you know watching uh, Kate and Will and them ushering in their third child I feel a bit envious you know so is baby envy a real thing or are we just succumbing to kind of pressure to you know keep on procreating no I think it's a very real thing anything that we really want and it's probably not happening right now is subject to envy be it a baby a promotion a relationship so yeah it's a real phenomenon so how do you get over it yes there are steps that you can take i mean the first one i would say is just realize that there's no point in comparisons everyone is on their own journey right so health wise emotionally mentally you know maybe even spiritually if you are feeling sort of a void because you really want a child there are ways to sort of fill that void with energy you can a babysit a nephew or a niece or a neighbor's child and that also solves the whole idea of getting experience so you know you get prepared the other thing is you know a lot of times there's this whole visual bombardment you know my baby bump my announcement on instagram facebook it might do you well psychologically to temporarily unfollow these kind of daily reminders because mm-hmm. then it, it almost becomes an assault on the senses number three would be pair up with a friend that's also kind of going through the same thing with you you're on that sort of same space where they also want a baby and it hasn't happened yet you can compare notes and then you become each other's greatest cheerleaders and in life there is a way to find that balance where you can be happy for others and proceed with your own journey a couple of years ago this was a hashtag that was trending like nobody's business FOMO <laughs> hashtag F-O-M-O Oh, fear of missing out. We want to talk about this with Dr. Angela and find out how we can deal with it after Michael learns to rock on light. She's a favorite psychologist, international psychologist. Dr. Angela Bass is joining us this morning. And this was a hashtag that was trending a couple of years ago. Hashtag FOMO or fear of missing out. That's right. So how do you deal with the fear of missing out on what everyone else is doing? Well, there's a couple of ways. Firstly, realize largely the fear is unfounded. Um, social media has taken the fear of missing out to the next level. But most of social media is a smoke screen. So for example, example if someone saying on Facebook oh I went on an around the world cruise they have purposely most likely left out the fact that they've had food poisoning half the time <laughs> you know uh, like I remember going back to humongous uh, credit card bill correct you know so we only see the shiny front cover we don't see like chapter 9 or behind the scenes you know I remember I was at the gym in the morning and I saw a lady on the treadmill running on it like at olympic speed for exactly 10 seconds and then that was her workout <laughs> and then it was on instagram with hashtags like just do it fitness discipline and i'm like that's <laughs> not the story and the rest of the you know everyone at the gym was just dumbfounded mm-hmm. so that's number 1 number 2 is it's human nature to think that the grass is greener on the other side the grass is greener wherever you water it the research shows that even if you're doing something equally fun you will always think the thing that is being done with others is more fun mm-hmm. you know so whether it's in therapy or just self reflections there are ways to work on attentional focus and regulation where you know sort of mindfulness i'm happy at where i am and it's just fine does the fear of missing out reduce with age Yes. <laughs> and I speak from personal experience. <laughs> I was wondering about that because you know I remember being young and thinking, "Oh, I have to go out tonight and I'm going to miss out on so much, blah blah blah." But Now it's like, uh, you couldn't bring me out even if I personally wanted to go. No, and the, I mean, for sure the research backs up, but I always smile at all the things you wanted to do when you were younger. Like, I want to go out, I want to spend the night over. It's they seem like punishments now. Like, exactly. like, I want to stay at home. What curfew? <laughs> So true, isn't it? We're with Dr. Angela Bass this morning. She's an international psychologist who joins us on Mind Matters this morning. Next up, let's take a look at the correlation between your self-awareness. The higher you go up the corporate ladder. That's next on Light.
Dr. Angela Bass is with us in Mind Matters this morning. And taking a look at this study, one study of more than 3,600 leaders across a variety of roles and industries actually found that relative to lower level leaders, higher level leaders more significantly overvalued their own skills compared with others' perceptions. Now, researchers cite two main reasons for the findings. Senior leaders simply have fewer people above them who can provide candid feedback to them. And the more power a leader wields, the less comfortable people will be to give them constructive feedback for fear it will hurt their careers. Their careers meaning the people underneath them. Mm. So, Dr. Angela, I mean, does self-awareness lower the higher you go up in the corporate ladder? Yes, there's a lot of research studies that demonstrate that. And adding to that, I would say the concept of intersectionality. So it's not just work hierarchy, but also cultural things in terms of age. We live in a very patriarchal culture. So if you're an older male, then you exert even more power. Mm -hmm. So these things combine to be very potent. And the higher you go, usually you tend to be more and more insulated. So that can lead to that phenomenon. So what about reality checks? How can you give these guys or these ladies, whoever's on top, a reality check without harming your own life and career? Well, maybe colleagues can anonymously send the research to their boss. But, you know, jokes apart, if a leader is determined to have effective leadership and to show tangible results, then having that self-awareness that often comes from other people because any type of relationship, romantic, work, friendship, they serve as a mirror in which to self-reflect who you are as a person. So we learn through our reflection from others. So that self-awareness through your employees, whether they're sort of on the hierarchy beneath you or otherwise, can be a very powerful tool in your arsenal of taking your work and your workplace to the next level. So, you know, you can institute things like anonymous feedback or, you know, sort of 360 degree reviews that are formal and, you know, make sure that you really are ready to take on the feedback. You know, as long as it's constructive criticism, the people telling shouldn't be punished. Next up on my matter is we've heard of midlife crisis, but apparently now there's something called quarter life crisis. We'll discuss that with Dr. Angela on light. Always a pleasure having Dr. Angela Bass with us on Mind Matters. And we've heard of midlife crisis, but never quarter life crisis. Yeah, so if you're in your 20s and 30s and you're unhappy with where you are in life right now and you feel like time is running out, apparently you are suffering from quarter life crisis. <laughs> what is this and how do you manage it? Aren't they a little early to be having this any kind of life crisis? I think any time's a good time to have a crisis. <laughs> they would appear. I mean, even the pressure on children you know, that are under 10 is phenomenal. The hours at school, the extracurriculars, it seems a lot of times that school is not even about the enjoyment of learning, but quite often about, you know, getting that perfect resume, CV to get into university, so on and so forth. When you couple it with what's happening in terms of let's say a political landscape of a country you know worldwide issues the economy on social media has enabled people to see you know at a pace never seen before what everybody else is up to Mm -hmm. so there is a lot of pressure you know financially relationship wise where am i and there's sort of this phenomena of comparing and despairing so yes it's very real how does one manage it then Well, you want to look around and not insulate yourself and think that you're the only one going through this. Form or find a community, reach out, share. It's always very helpful in life to have a mentor, whether it's at work or just talking to maybe someone that's older about relationships, balance, life advice. Even as a psychologist, we're never done when we finish our degree. There's always this idea of continuous education. So we're updating our skills, we're keeping relevant Um, reading up. So with these things, you will build your confidence that when opportunity comes, you will be ready. Well, doctor, it's been a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me.